finish and close. And every time you hit a free throw, it, it plants a seed of doubt, and that's really important, I think, in this particular game when Arlington, you know, started to close that gap. So I'm really proud of that effort, I think, overall. And as we begin to, begin to start moving deeper into conference play, I can honestly say I think Megan's done a phenomenal job for us. I think Kaylin Martin, for the most part, um, has kind of been our sole leader for us as far as just a young woman who's been steady both in the classroom and on the basketball court. And Megan can tell you this, we recruited her for that purpose alone. It wasn't necessarily the scoring, but we always knew that Megan was a winner. She played at the junior college level, took her team at Midland to the National Junior College Championship, which I think is huge. It's equivalent to the NCAA tournament. She played against phenomenal athletes that played at the BCS level, so we knew she could do it. It's just a matter of her ability to be able to make that adjustment. It's very difficult sometimes for junior college transfers to make the adjustment. And what we've always asked for her is a leadership standpoint. So now the basketball is coming along. I think it's made it a little bit easier for her as well as for Kaylin Martin. It allows for our younger kids to make some mistakes. It allows for us to play through some of the um, hiccups that we have at times when you have, you know, Kaylin Martin and Megan Brown. So I think as I look to this game, I think we've seen some strong consistency with Megan and Kaylin. I think that's really important. Ultimately, that's where we want to be. And so I was happy, regardless of who we played and what the score is, that's an area for sure that I'm really excited about. Does it kind of make it a little bit easier to know that UTA has kind of made this transition with you guys, that if there's a lone constant that you guys have had through these three years, you guys have been jumping through conferences? You know, you guys well, I don't know if you say necessarily easier. There's a familiarity, but again, it's a rivalry game. And I'm clearly aware of the split that we've had my first year where we beat them, that we were the last team to play them on the stage. I don't know if those of y'all were with me. You remember we did a prayer at one point, and that was a switch. Like, literally, we prayed. We've never done that before during a, um, it was led by, at the time, it was Kelsey Krupa. During the game? During the game, during okay. a timeout. That's all we did. That's okay. what we did was pray. And it literally turned the game around. Won the game on the stage, but then we brought it back here. We lost that game again. We split last year. And so I won in this game clearly understanding. And, and my, my goal was to make sure this team understood it's a rivalry game um, and that we have to be prepared at some level. No matter how comfortable we are, it's not like they haven't beat us before or nor that they've played so close. I mean, they keep playing extremely close contest and just come up short. Uh, Megan, was there a point um, early in the season where it kind of clicked for you where you, uh, where you knew you had a chance of making a starting lineup for this team? Um, yeah, real, honestly, it was whenever we came back from Christmas break, because um, I did struggle in the beginning of the season, but once we came back from Christmas break, you know, I just, I guess with time, I got more comfortable in the offense, and uh, once we came back from Christmas break, everything just, I guess clicked. I don't know if it was a time off. I can't tell you what it was, but everything just started clicking, and then um, just my production has gone up. So that's helped a lot. Ben Ray, when when Kate got hurt, did it kind of help to well, be able to play both, um, you know, Megan as well as you know Kaylin, as you were talking about on the floor together to have that both that team that leadership you were talking about on the floor at the same time. I think it did, especially I think more so Meg, for Megan and her confidence. The goal was always I knew at some point to get out there, and you know, and I and I explained this to the team. Um, before Kate was even hurt, I already saw the consistency out of Megan in practice, really. I said, you know, Megan's got her opportunity to play more through practice, and she just kept getting better. Decision-making got better. Um, she's in the office a lot. She's asking questions. She's truly trying to understand. I think ultimately, so she, she truly earned that spot regardless of Kate's injury, but I think that helped her, I think, ultimately with her confidence for sure. And I think, honestly, this game helps Kate out with her confidence, mm -hmm. but she's been out for some time. If she hits that three, it's like, as a shooter, you're like, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, so now, you can, now I can play, you know? Another that, Yeah. I wanted to address the free throw shooting. That's been a problem for you guys this year. But today, you made a 26 of 33 from the line. Was there anything different? Why did you guys, why were you guys able to, you know, make free throws? Because that was a pretty important facet of the game down I the stretch. I think the team has realized um, we, we hit a pocket where we, we went into a bit of a ditch. But then we hit a really nice pocket where we shoot in the 70s, OK? Then we hit the break and we got away from our free throw shooting regiment. Um, I think that really kind of stifled us in our last our last game. And then we came back to I'll be honest with you, it's who they fouled, to be honest with you. Ultimately it's who they fouled. They fouled some of our better um, kids who are good at the pressure situation. Not necessarily better free throw shooters, but they're better at that pressure situation where they can kind of relax. They've been there, done that. Um, and I think that's why those kids were able to hit it. And they knew the team needed it. I mean, really and truly, I think um, in those situations they understood. And we, sh and we kind of switched up what we do in practice right now too. Um, your opportunity to hit free throws in a row, it means you get a water break or not. I mean, that's really what's happened in practice, which is a little bit of a difference. And so I think that's helped as well, because you want the water in practice. <laughs> Kaylin, what was the moment when you realized that you were back and then you were able to, you know, shed your injury and, you know, be become a better player this uh, today? Uh, the moment I hit the three. <laughs> uh. 
it, uh, it's right. Um, I was out for a, for a while and kind of you know nerve wracking to come back and just college level and I was just finally getting in the groove of things when I got hurt and so um, I was a little nervous but I came out and you know still the game basketball and kind of got hit that three and it, it kind of calmed me down. Megan, your last two or the last three games, you had 13 points. I guess a, a week ago, 16 points tonight. Has it been something in the last couple of weeks of practice that you've noticed in the start, in your transition and feeling more comfortable out there? Yeah, like Coach V said, just my practicing. Um, I've been knocking down shots in practice. So I think that's just with my confidence level, just having better practices and just carrying over to the games. And after not scoring the first half, you scored all 16 of your points in the second. What kind of snapped you? Did something kind of set in place a little bit with some teammates kind of finding you for good shots or just, you know, what kind of went along with it? Yeah, just – all my shots were in flow, and I mean, half of them, yeah, half of them came uh, from the free or from the free throw line, and that's really one of my strong points. I'm a good free throw shooter, so. And they kind of amped up the pressure on you guys in the second half. How did you guys beat that? Because they were kind of playing, you know, they were pressing you from the beginning. How did you guys <coughs> be able to succeed against that kind of defense? I think calling timeouts and kind of di- not kind of calling timeouts, diagramming what should be done, and the players being able to execute it. So say you mess up. On, on that one particular opportunity, then the next time around, this team is really good at timeout response and understanding, oh, this is what needs to happen. Again, I go back to Megan and Kaylin. Um, when they're in the game, they can clearly tell them, look, relax, look, you've got timeouts, look, she's cutting. Um, I think that's just the maturity of a, of a player. It's the maturity of the team. On a night when you weren't shooting as well as you'd like to be, was there more of a focus on trying to drive to the basket, get to the line? Because obviously tonight, you know, you go tw- you get to the line 33 times there had to have been maybe a little bit more of a focus on, on trying to score more points at the at the free throw. Mm-hmm. Right. I think the team understood that from the beginning. That's where we're going to have the opportunity to score. That's how teams have beaten them, is the free throw line and getting them in foul trouble, um, especially when we didn't have a, a low post game tonight. Um, it just wasn't on. The kids were missing shots, missing easy layups at times, and those opportunities ended up being few and far between. So we kind of switched up the lineup, tweaked it. You know, Aaron Peoples. You saw, you saw a little bit of last year's team with Aaron Peoples and Jasmine Boggess in there running it at forward spots for us. And it ended up working because they're both really aggressive kids. The kind of transition on my next question I was going to ask. You got, you know, uh, EPs coming <coughs> along here, have, have good years before Jasmine. It seems like she's gotten her confidence back. Uh, as you said, the low post game wasn't there today. Does it bode well for you guys knowing that you didn't have that low post game, but you still got contributions from these two EPs, Jasmine? Just kind of talk about I think it does for, for a lot of different reasons. I think from a coaching standpoint, it gives you power of the bench. If, if you're not doing your job and you're not able to help our team in one area, that's all right. The team should still have confidence because we're able to win with a different lineup tonight, a smaller lineup. But then there are nights for sure where we have that power game and it's there. Um, I do believe in those young women. I do think that Clay Mays, Jacqueline Jeffco, Ashley Eze can score for us in the paint. They were off tonight for whatever reason. But I will tell you, they had an off shoot around. So in the back of my mind, I, I was kind of prepped for that. I think it's exciting for this team because they know we can show different looks and it's hard to prep for teams that have various looks. I think it's tough. You know, they switched their starting group um, in this game and I don't know if it necessarily has anything to do with us, us as much as what they're trying to do scheme-wise, but I think we're tougher to defend if we have multiple kids that can hurt you um, inside versus out. Is that right? What kind of what kind of popped Megan on your radar when you're recruiting her? Was there a specific game? Or leadership, just pure, pure leadership. <coughs> her in the the transition when she when Megan as a point guard took her team Midland Junior College. She played for a great junior college coach, um, and she took her team to the junior college championship. It already again I go back to this class of Caitlin Wallace class. Megan's part of that of just kids that have won, that have gone to state. And I think that regardless of where they're lacking in areas, athleticism, whatever that might be, what people want to talk about, she already knew how to win. And you don't, it's hard to coach how to win. It's, you can't coach how to win. You can coach some things scheme-wise, but you can't coach heart. You really can't. I think that's what put her on our radar. Megan, tell you, my first conversation with her was all about leadership. Um, we talked about her injury that she's had, how she came back from it, and I was sold. Clearly, I was sold. Um, she comes from a great family. You know, she truly does. She's got good parents, hardworking people, country folks. <laughs> um, so I married a country guy, so I know a little something about country people. There's just there's a work ethic that I- is different sometimes when you recruit suburban kids, and you and you see that in her. And so I knew at some point it would come. It didn't come probably as fast as she'd like for it to, but you know I'm proud of her. And she's going to have her peaks and valleys like any other student athlete. But you know I'm I'm really proud of Megan because she's helping our team in more ways than what you even see on the basketball court. And going back to the p- protecting the paint, which is you know where you guys are lacking. Um, Deshera, I can't pronounce her last name. She's got 25 points, 13 mm-hmm. rebounds. 
huge because he had a lot of good deep post position. Um, how, why was she able to, you know, frustrate you guys down low? Why was she so because successful? Because we didn't work hard enough in the middle of the paint. It's that simple. I mean, they can tell you. I, I harped on that because clearly in film, I, like most coaches, you study a lot of film. That kid is very good at what she does. Um, and she doesn't exert uh, too much energy in doing it. She's really efficient. She's a senior. She's seen us. I mean, really and truly, she's very good at just a reverse seal. Get her the ball. She scores layups. Duck in. If you, if you get lazy, you get flat, she ducks in. So if we're not prepared to play and we don't work hard enough, my bet was going with Jasmine Bogus, who's smaller, and Aaron Peoples, who's smaller. They may not be as strong, but they're at least going to fight to get over the top. And then what you notice, we had, even though she's a smaller guard, so we had a guard helping on the backside. <coughs> that plan worked out somewhat better for us. Of course, there's times we fouled and put at the free throw line than it did maybe with going somebody with more size who, you know, she could just basically duck in on. I mean, you can't sugarcoat that. I mean, the kids, we didn't do a good job in that area. And they exploited it. And obviously, next time we face them there, we've got to do a better job. Coach C, obviously you guys want to finish a lot better. Um, was there something um, over the last four minutes that you saw that allowed them to kind of sneak back into the game and make it look a little bit closer than it obviously was? Um, I think sometimes, and as you notice, I didn't call timeouts. I needed, I needed to have enough confidence in them to let them play through that on their own. Um, I, if, if it got too scary for me, I was going to call a timeout. But I said, I really did. I turned to Sue and said, do I call a timeout or do I not? I was like, I think I need to let them play through. And Sue said, let them play through it. Let's see what they do. Empower them. And that's really what I did at that point. Um, I gave them the choice to, to make decisions on their own. So I can see. So now we can go back and take a look at why did you make the decision? And Kate can tell you every time. And I was like, we have timeouts. We have timeouts. I kept telling we have timeouts. And I was clearly aware of what point I was willing to let her burn one um, or not. And you know, in some ways, I honestly just wish that on, as to where they were as, as a team. Kate, how do you think, you, as an all-time team, you guys kind of break through that, that struggle where you guys have those extended stretches of like four minutes tonight where you guys don't hit a <coughs> shot, like, you know, seven minutes before the season, like six minutes. How do you guys break through that stage to where you guys can be a consistent offensive team? You know, I think we've improved every game this season. That's one thing I love about this team is we, we find an area where we're lacking and we set our sights on make, fixing that. And so um, it was started with free throws. We've gotten better at that. Um, we had, we concentrated on defense. I think we've, we've done a lot better at that. Um, so I think I have faith in our team that we will be able to get through that, those stretches. Where we, um, and we keep, I think we keep on executing our offense better and better. So I think it's going to I think confidence continues. One more question. Is the end? Oh, okay, I wasn't sure that was the end. Uh, Megan, I want to talk to you about the, their defense. They kind of run like a zone defense. They're kind of active. They pressure. How are you able to beat that? You know, find people, score threes, and then you know, get to the mm -hmm. line. Uh, really, I mean, all about attacking the zone is just attacking gaps and then ball reversal and hitting the high post and looking for duck ins. So, I think we did a good job of attacking gaps sometimes and just really just finding an open person and scoring out of that. Thank you. Thank you.